The Way of White is an ancient, divergent religious institution that often functions much like the medieval church of Middle Age Europe. They build cathedrals, raise armies, and assert themselves as a social and political power, influencing the affairs of kings and nations. While Christianity is based on the Word of God, what is the foundation of the Way of White? Over the years, various members of the Souls community have come to the conclusion that Way of White essentially translates to Way of Gwyn. In his video on the Way of White and the Undead Curse, lore creator Hawkshaw says, begin quote, The name Gwyn is a Welsh name that means white. It would therefore make sense that the Way of White is worshipping Gwyn, end quote. However, he speculates that with the passing of time, Gwyn is no longer the object of worship within the Way of White. He reinforces this theory with solid evidence, such as implications that the upper echelons of the Way of White exhibit very little, if any, faith. Hawkshaw's video offers many more insights on this topic of lore, and I recommend everyone to check out his content. You can find a link to his video in the description below. So, if the Way of White doesn't directly worship Gwyn, what do they worship? Many would say All Father Lloyd, but as we know from Dark Souls 3, this is no longer the case. The description for Lloyd's sword ring states, Much time has passed since the worship of Lloyd was common in the Way of White. The clerics of Kareem had always strongly asserted that Lloyd was a derivative fraud, and that the All Father title was self-proclaimed. It's probably safe to assume that, over time, the clerics of the Way of White grew skeptical of Lloyd, and eventually challenged his dominion. Regardless of the loss of a leader, the Way of White appears to still be a powerful, influential religious institution. It seems as if the Way of White shelters those with royal blood, or perhaps even some of the gods who fled An Orlando in ages past. There's evidence in the Cathedral of the Deep that... Hold on guys, I can feel a lore tangent coming on, so this is a topic I'm going to delve into another day. Anyways, I get the impression that the supreme ruler of the Way of White was always a bad, bad dude in terms of fighting ability. I used to think of Lloyd as a non-combatant type of fellow until reading some of the item descriptions relating to Lloyd in Dark Souls 3. The Dual Charm item description reads, Tools used in Duels of Judgment. Knoll's effects of special area, special area effects, that's really awkward, for a short time. All Father Lloyd's knights lived in fear of his Duels of Judgment, in which verdicts were carried out by a sword of law. Okay, I see two interpretations here. One is that Lloyd, for whatever reason, challenged his knights to duels of judgment, most likely cutting them down with deft ease. The other interpretation is that Lloyd's knights would challenge each other in duels, and Lloyd would deem the verdict of the loser and then execute them. Either way you look at it, Lloyd is nothing to be trifled with. However, he was eventually disowned by the clerics of Kareem, it seems as though leadership has been shaky within the Way of White ever since. With an emphasis on might over right, it seems that leadership within the Way of White is determined by power alone. For now, I'm going to skip past whatever occurred within the Way of White between Lloyd's departure and the events of Dark Souls 3. In the player character's time, it seems as though the Pontiff Sullivan is the dominant leader of the Way of White, leading up to the fading of the flame. Regardless of this, the present day Way of White worships and venerates the same thing they always have, the first flame. Not only Gwyn, but all manner of beings, and even space and time itself, owe everything to the first flame which bore them souls. Who is Gwyn without the power of the Light Soul? Most likely just a wandering hollow, just like all other humanoid beings. In light of this, I contend that the head figure of the Way of White is irrelevant, because at the end of the day, 
It's the power of the first flame itself that is worshipped, not the perceived owner of that power. The head of the church is one who understands the nature of the first flame, capitalizes on its strength, and desires above all else to keep it lit. This idea can be further supplemented by Rhea, Petrus, and other Way of White characters from Dark Souls 1. Clerics were sent on an undead mission to acquire the right of kindling from the land of the gods in order to bolster the first flame with fragments of the Dark Soul. According to Petrus, it's believed among clerics that bolstering bonfires with humanity will one day grant them magnificent powers. One last bit of support on this idea is the item description for the deacon robe, which reads, Robe worn by the deacons of the Cathedral of the Deep, the deep red pigment denotes the blessing of fire. In time, those dedicated to sealing away the horrors of the deep succumb to their very power. It seems that neither tending to the flame nor the faith could save them. It seems as though the chief duties of the Way of White are based around tending to the flame, and the Way of White is, whether its lower tier members are aware of this or not, centralized around the worship of the first flame and not on ancient dead gods. <clears throat> this brings me to the topic of this video. I'm sure I'm not the first one to notice the floral design decorating various structures found in all three games. I mean, this design is everywhere. In fact, it may be the most prevalent environmental detail in the entire Soul series. Although I noticed this petaled flower design before, I never really gave it much thought. That is, until I came across the item description for the Sacred Bloom Shield. It reads... A treasured antique of the Way of White, known to some as the Sorcerer's Bane. The large blossom design that graces the shield is said to be a sacred flame, and the shield is blessed with high magic protection. Okay, so obviously the shield isn't literally a flame, rather it represents one. You might ask, if this description is a reference to the first flame, then why doesn't it simply name it as such? In Dark Souls 3, the Way of White seems to be centralized in Kareem, and wherever Kareem is located is far, far away from the first flame. I think it's far more likely that the aforementioned sacred flame is actually in reference to a bonfire. As we all know, bonfires are linked to the first flame, so in a way, bonfires are the first flame. I have one more item description to help back this up before we move on. Sanctus, the shield of Paladin Leroy, reads, A legendary weapon of the Way of White, granted to an undead paladin long ago. Once blessed with the protection of a white flame, but its power has all but faded, so that it provides only slight HP recovery. Leroy's referenced is not only the first undead produced by the Way of White, but as the first church member to make pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. His shield has been adorned with a white, blossoming flower, and has been a legendary relic of the Way of Light since long before it was wielded by Leroy. This fits all too well with what we've established so far. The shield is legendary, and therefore must be incredibly old. Remember that Gwyn translates to white. Wouldn't it make perfect sense for the design of Sanctus to be implemented in a time when Lloyd and the church were still loyal in their worship of Gwyn? A white blooming flower symbolizing a white flame. Gwyn's flame. If you're still not convinced of this connection between the floral design found in-game and the first flame, then don't worry. I've got a little bit more evidence. In terms of timeline, the most ancient structure featuring the floral design is the ruined cathedral of An Orlando. The four-petal flower is carved into the ancient marble stone, and there is also, of course, 
the great stained glass window that can be seen incandescing in the illusory sunlight on the facade of the cathedral. It's quite well known among fans of the series that Anne Orlando was inspired by the Milan Cathedral in Italy. It's easy to see how From Software was so inspired by this magnificent architecture. What's interesting to note is that the Milan Cathedral also features a stained glass window featuring a floral design. This is actually called a rose window or Catherine window and was prevalent in the Gothic cathedrals of early modern Europe. In Dark Souls, I think this rose window is a symbolic depiction of the first flame. This design serves as the foundation for the architectural style of all Way of White structures. Floral designs are prevalent throughout structures relating to Gwyn and the Way of White in all three games. It was likely All Father Lloyd who began this trend when he departed An Orlando to shepherd the humans, having churches and cathedrals built in imitation of An Orlando. So why might a blossom be used to symbolize the first flame? We know from the opening cinematic of Dark Souls 1 that the first flame sprouted from deep within the roots of an arch tree. With the flame came disparity, and disparity manifested itself in terms of existence as we know it. Heat and cold, life and death, light and dark. These concepts were given birth by the first flame in the form of souls. While scouring the series looking for occurrences of floral design, I came across these stained glass windows from Dranglaic Castle in Dark Souls 2. I was disappointed in myself for never paying these windows any attention because they're actually pretty interesting. The windows depict a bonfire with the sword piercing through a dragon and into the bones of the undead. Not only does this honor the bonfire, but it also represents the Age of Fire and how the Age of Fire came to be. With the defeat of the ancient dragons at the hands of the ancient lords, the first flame and its children were free to actualize dreams of godhood and greatness. Something else that stood out to me about these windows is that the floral design is featured below the flames. This could serve as a counterpoint to my thesis that all floral design in the series depicts the first flame. If the flame is shown rising from the petals, could the flowers actually represent the arch tree that housed the first flame? There's so little we know definitively about the arch trees. Their existence itself, rooted in an age of endless gray, is a complete mystery. What is it about this particular arch tree that resulted in the advent of fire? Or do other trees have flames as well, with each tree serving as the anchor of its own universe? As interesting as this may be, I think it's more likely that the floral design does in fact symbolize the first flame itself, and not the arch trees. Seeing as how light Dark Souls 2 references are in Dark Souls 3, it's difficult to place credence on lore points from Dark Souls 2 in relation to the lore of the third game. We have two major flower designs in the series. There's the grandiose bloom design featuring many petals, and there's also the four petal design, which basically looks like a four leaf clover. I believe that the four petals represent the four lord souls, the four most powerful constituent elements of the first flame. However, the bloom design is a little bit more complicated. It was directly inspired by the aforementioned rose window, which depicts Jesus in the center, surrounded by the gospel writers, apostles, saints, angels, and so on. With this in mind, in Dark Souls, perhaps the bloom represents the first flame in the middle, with the lords, gods, and other prominent beings symbolized as petals, spreading outward and becoming less and less powerful the further they are from the center. To wrap things up, while the Way of White was founded in reverence of Gwyn, the church diverged from this ideal, most likely after Gwyn linked the fire. With Allfather Lloyd in uncontested control, 
He began his agenda of feeding bonfires with humanity and corralling undead to be sent north. Perhaps suffering from delusions of grandeur, his self-imposed divine right of rule was eventually debunked and he was cast out. In ages since, I believe that many different beings have been the subject of worship and veneration within the Way of White. Regardless of this, the Way of White is dependent on tending to the flame and harnessing and exploiting its abilities. The cycle of ages perpetuates and the Way of White persists in its endeavors to not only control the power of the fire, but also in protecting knowledge and truth pertaining to it. The floral design is consistent throughout all of Dark Souls history, and the highest concentration of it is in the Ponce of Sullivan's Cathedral in Irithyll. The list of evidence of the Pontiff being the current leader of the Way of White grows long indeed. Anyways, that's pretty much all I've got. Thanks for watching everyone. I had tons of fun hunting for floral designs in all three games, and even more fun putting this video together. Feel free to rip me apart in the comment section, or to ask me to elaborate on any of my points. Thanks again guys, and have a good one.